Thanks for watching eBay's YouTube, home of the one take video, hopefully. This will be one take. Um, just casting an, an ingot um, to try out this rolling machine. It's from Vivor. They, they can cost about 130, 140 bucks on eBay. And um, it, it doesn't look strong enough, but I'm actually making a couple ingots that I don't really need, but having 14 karat plate and wire is um, useful. So, you know, just as an experiment, I got all these new, new tools and things. Um, here's a new scale I just got, and here's the 100 gram even weight to calibrate it. And just to show you, it's accurate to the hundredth, the hundredth of a gram. So just let's weigh this and find out that it's 747. It's a jumbo jet. Um, this is, I think, 14 karat gold. I don't, I don't know. I'll test it later. But I'm gonna cast an ingot from this, and uh, I'm just curious, is is the um, is the ingot going to weigh 747? The easy number to remember. Okay, let's cast an ingot. <laughs> so, this is an ingot mold. I've actually owned this thing about 40 years. Um, it used to be just blue to gunmetal black. And uh, let's see, practice pour, okay. You can have little beads of gold running everywhere. <laughs> All right, I actually haven't tried to melt anything with this torch, I can't find my good torch. And um, so one thing's real important about an ingot mold like this, um, you don't want any moisture. And you don't want, you wanna preheat your, your mold um, to make sure there's absolutely no moisture in it. Because if you pour molten gold or silver into this hole and there's actually a lot of moisture, like like you just steamed it or cleaned it with water. Uh, I did that when I was 18 in diamond setting school. I came out like a shotgun and put a pattern of silver on the ceiling. And the... The teacher, Ray Scow, School of Diamond Setting in Portland, Oregon, uh, back in 1980, I was like, oh, we're definitely leaving that silver up there to show people what not to do. And uh, it, 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 was, it was a good explosion. And um, that can happen. But I literally steam cleaned the mold and forgot to preheat it. Anywho, enough talking. Let's um, see if I can melt the, the gold. I'm going to try and preheat this now a little bit, but also I'm going to hit it some more at the last minute. You want to use a little boric acid or borax, kind of a, a flux. Ideally, you want a nice antioxidant coating on anything you're melting or soldering. So I have a couple of different chemicals here. This is just borax. Staying on there a little better now that it's no. I can see this is gonna be a problem. Okay, great. Um, that's why I have a spare torch. I can't find my 
good torch that I have somewhere here. <laughs> it uh, looks like tipping things over. This is way hotter anyway and it might work better. So I'll keep this one handy as a lighter. But this one you can tilt. So it doesn't get flooded with the liquid liquid gas. Also this is much hotter. This is what they call matte gas. It's a little hotter than propane. And uh, this might be the move anyway. It's hotter and I can tilt the nozzle. Even on even on my good one that has its own lighter, you can't you can't tip the nozzle. So Be afraid to coat your bowl with boric acid. I got a little potassium nitrate ready. I was gonna maybe do some hot refining, but that's probably another story. That's why I got the chopstick. Ideally, you want to carbon. I could be doing this with oxyacetylene, which would be probably a lot quicker. This is working okay. You want to heat your crucible, especially the path where the gold is going to go. And also make sure that has some liquid glass on it, uh, which is what boric acid is. This is all that a noise about. I don't want a bigger flame, I think this is it. Ideally, you want a bigger torch or something that operates with oxygen. oxygen flame would have this melted about 10 minutes ago. expected to take this long. This is getting ridiculous.
Okay, I had I had a lot more to go. But this this is ancient and uh, it's it says don't only use it with propane. <laughs> but uh it's actually called dual fuel. I kind of drilled out the nozzle, screwed it all up. Uh, I thought the flame would go out if I turned it up anymore. Okay, let's check out that ingot. Okay, I hope you fast forwarded. That took forever. Oh, look at the cute little ingot. Well, I didn't really need to do that. It was um, cool to the touch already. All the heat got absorbed by this beautiful mold. Okay, so there's another ingot I want to make. Now, let's see. I actually lost a little plop here. And let's see. Calibrate again just for shiggles. Okay. It's kind of amazing. First first scale I've owned that goes to the hundredth of a gram. Well somehow 0.2 of a gram got vaporized. It was 747, now it's 745. Okay, I'm gonna um, kind of scrape off these, file off these little bits and pieces. Looks like I forgot to bring my file. Okay, without getting any water on this thing. Ooh, a little hot, okay. Good thing, you want it hot. So I'm gonna um this this exercise is really to to um to test that rolling mill right there. Is a rolling mill with it's just you know amazingly stingy on metal parts for the way other rolling mills are built. So I'm just fascinated to see I would have just done some silver but silver is so much softer than gold okay well I'll just kind of I'll make this ingots probably going to be uh, twice as big and instead of seven grams I think I got about 14 there and I'm pretty sure these other parts are are um, actual 14k but we're going to test that <laughs> Like my guy on uh, Project Farm says, we're going to test that. <laughs> Just the best channel. If you ever want to know what tools are the best or what products are the best, it's really a fascinating channel. Shout out to the guy on Project Farm. <laughs> Anywho, let's uh, get some more boric acid handy. And the cover to my to my nice new um, scale. And there's some even this little piece of gold right here doesn't even register, did it? You'd think that would be a hundredth of a gram, but no. How about these bits? A little flashing. I'm going to see, rip that off with my nail. Or do I need to get a file? Hmm. All right. Yeah, the reason I want to test that rolling mill is because the two bolts that control the rollers are incredibly thin for how thick they are in, on most rolling mills. But then a, a good rolling mill is a, a thousand bucks or something, or at least uh, over seven hundred, not a hundred and forty. And it came damaged. One of the one of the roller adjusters was bent because it got just dropped on its head. And of course, that would have never got bent with a really thick. Um, I'm talking about the the bolts that push the rollers down so the, the bolts on those top gear heads uh, one was bent I had to straighten it and um, rather than accept a return they they gave it to me for half price <laughs> so 
if you talk to the right eBayer, um, so that I'm ready to roll, I'm going to quickly get a file. Where do I have a file? Something coarse like this will do just fine. I could try my new sanding stick. Awesome sauce. All right, well, kind of getting some all new jewelry tools together because a lot of my stuff is 40 years old and just about useless. Well, some of it, some of it is just fine. But um, jewelry tools are now dramatically uh, cheaper than they were and much more modern than they were when I learned jewelry 40 years ago at Ray Scow School of Diamond Setting in Portland, Oregon. I have no idea if that school is still around, but the memories, Portland in the 80s, Mount St. Helens, that was a, a lot of fun. All right. Yeah, I got rid of a little. Just want to make it ready for. I did say I was going to use my sanding stick. Just want to make it ready to roll out a nice piece of wire. Like I said, this whole thing is an experiment to make sure a $70 rolling mill at this point. Um, Actually, I'm passing it on to a up-and-coming jeweler that I know in Salt Lake who wants to buy it for 70 bucks. All right. Like I said, I repaired one of the bolts, so we've lost uh, we lost well somewhere between now, uh, yeah, lost six hundredths of a gram in little flakes and bits. And of course, before I can um, roll this out, I'm gonna have to anneal it. So I'm gonna not forget to anneal that. And let's, um, let's look at the next thing we're gonna melt for a nice flat ingot, okay. And these guys are, let's, let's do that same experiment, see how much we lose in vaporized gold. Okay, 1536. 15 grams, 36. All right, um, you know, I made these in the 90s. <laughs> so, they haven't brought me joy in 30 years. They're going away. A nice little source of 14K. Got some borax ready. Yeah, we'll do the hot refining later. I mean, this looks like some good gold. And like I said, I'll test it later. I'm going to test that. I mean, no hot refining today. Besides, it makes a lot of smoke. I kind of want to do it outside. Hmm. Out there on the balcony covered in snow maybe not all right um all right yeah so actually this turned out to be not bad and i guess i could use it a lot hotter than i can you know and because i'm not having to tip it upside down which it would have been the case with what i'm calling my good map torch um, when you tip it upside down the liquid gets gets up here and you don't have the vaporized gas that you need which is why it cut out earlier on the video so I got my nice uh, lighter over here okay don't need much for that and let's see just how big a flame we can get before it goes out okay Call that the limit. Oh, so that's the things. Hopefully, we get to 
melt some, <laughs> damn it, that's what I meant. This thing used to work pretty good, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago. <laughs> okay, let's start slow. Okay, it goes out there, so maybe you'll start.
Yeah. Get all those glass beads off the ball if you can. Just use the flame to want to get all that nice and hot. The path, get a nice glaze on that ball. said we're gonna anneal this. Now annealing gold, very simple, silver or gold, you want a nice cherry red color. Audio must really suck. You don't want to melt it again, but you want a nice bright cherry red color. And the idea is you let that cool down slowly. That's a good cherry red right there. Let it cool down slowly. And um, I'm not gonna dip it in water or something. Just it'll take a long time to cool down. Well, relatively long. And uh, so that that's ready for rolling. I guess I should have done this one too. Let's see this guy. Yeah, not the best shape ever, but uh, there it is. Yeah. A few moments ago, this was molten. Anybody remember how much what I started with waves? <laughs> I have to look that up. It doesn't matter. I can see I've got lots of um, little shards of gold everywhere. And uh, yeah, it'd be better if the the rolling mill was a little tighter. But you do want a little air to escape as you pour in the molten gold. Yeah, see? Got a little molten gold right there. Drip down the side. This is probably one of the worst ingots I've ever poured. Usually I get a nice, nice rounded tip like this. Well, anyway, concave, it splashed down. Need some ingot pouring experience, which I haven't had any lately. So let's see, just for shiggles. And 
goes a little part on top. Uh, okay, well, 1534. Sounds familiar. Okay, so. Yeah, let's try to do this quick like. Uh, collect all this gold and put it in the Bermuda Fund, as my teacher Ray Scow used to say. I'd be filing some gold out in the open and go, oh yeah, go ahead. Put gold dust on the school floor. We love it. Contributing to my Bermuda Fund. He was the greatest. He was the greatest teacher I've ever had. Because he would always find some way, no matter how crappy someone did something, he'd, he'd find some way to um, find something good about it. <laughs> it was just amazing. Because, uh, anyway, so 15 grams of gold. And uh, real quick, I nail this. Okay, let's see. Yeah, don't even want to try with this because as we know, what happens is, you tip it down. Okay. Now this is just not the right amount of power. Off is the opposite of on. Cherry red. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna do that backwards because it's very counterintuitive when it's the opposite. So off is this way. All right, let that cool down. And uh, of course, this is the pickle. Blast off all the oxidation. Now, where's my piece? 
Oh, there it is. Okay. You can see the tiny bubbles. That is just um, a light mixture of baking soda. You don't have to. You can just do water. But hey, when I taste this stuff, it's not acidy. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Don't taste the pickle. That's acid. Some kind of acid. All right, let that cool down naturally. And try the first bit of rolling on my new rolling mill that will soon be someone else's. I like to go, you want to go one direction when you roll something out. You're going to make some square wire because you can make anything from that. Round wire, square wire. Um, yeah, so I, I use the, you know, there's a flat bottom and a front, so I'm just going to feed it through frontwards. And like I said, these posts are super thick on other rolling mills. Like, it's the biggest bolt you've ever seen. And um, so, I just uh, see how this works. So you want to feed it in. I'm going to open these guys until I can feel it go in. Let's see if that'll do it. Yeah. So yeah, the idea here is to righty tidy put this rolling mill through its paces. I said not to go backwards, but <laughs> this the start part is okay, just a few times. Since they're not really there. Just going back and forth. I don't want to drop it out, feel it, put it back in. Just trying to get some good compression going on the biggest square wire. So we squared it up. So now I want to, it was in this way, now I'm putting it in this way to um, keep it going. Well, turn it around 90 degrees each time to make sure you're doing it evenly. <laughs> I, did, I did say not to only go one direction, but I'm kind of breaking that rule for expediency's sake. And this part. Okay, turn it this way. It's going pretty good. totally doing what I said not to going backwards but each time I go backwards it's because I just went forward so let's see 190 degree turn hold it in there and back out Okay, so now the rollers are touching. Go one more go. It's time to, to go for the other square wire slot and uh, 
moved it quite a distance. It would actually be better to re-anneal this. Um, and honestly, maybe these bolts don't have to be massively, hugely thick. I've seen them as thick as an inch, these, these bolts that push the rollers down, because it is in compression. And I'm pushing down a, a hub that holds the wheel. So, hey. So, next go around, I'm going to use the next square and then the next one. Um, uh, anneal this. Kind of boring. Let's, oh, can I pick that up with my bare hands? Sure. <laughs> it's hot still. It'll probably sizzle as I throw it in here. Let's see. A yeah, little sizzle. Not bad. It's definitely cooled down enough to drop it in the pickle. Get rid of that oxidation. And re this real quick. Okay. Come on. Should be able to do it with this thing. The cone of the flame is the hottest, so where you see that blue turn into purple is the hottest part of the flame. You want to keep your flame moving. This seems to help. I'm looking for a nice cherry red again. And to pull down slowly, you have dead soft metal. There it is, and <laughs> just when it vaporized, shake. All right, yes, well, that's why this, this nozzle right here is pretty good. It can point at different directions. I really didn't realize that. And of course, if I didn't, if, yeah, there's that. Oxidation still didn't get rid of it. Let's see, maybe it's gone. And a little while longer in the pickle, get rid of the oxidation, except who cares? The main thing is I'm putting the rolling mill through its paces by rolling out a nice thick chunk of gold. Uh, you know, I don't expect the compression bolts here that compress the rollers to in fact break or anything so open it up this opens a maximum of five millimeters which is this is about three millimeters get that open Hmm. If this was a normal rolling mill, I would just go. Well, I can kind of feel something, just... I don't want to stress it out too much. Actually, we want to do things gradually. <laughs> go backwards. <laughs> what is that snapping? Less than the best quality is what we got here. I had to heat that bolt to straighten it, but hey, my buddy's getting a $70 rolling mill. Actually, I think I know what the snapping's about. Probably not a big deal. I think they're going to be using it for silver anyway, so 
gold is much harder. And one of the things I wanted to check You know, they kind of spring-loaded these things. So I'm going in one direction, actually just front forward and not spinning it back and forth. So I'm going to leave the black on the bottom and uh, kind of make it thinner as much as I dare. You don't really, you don't usually hear snapping when you do this on a good quality rolling mill, but you know, if this thing will do the job for a total of seventy dollars spent, seventy refunded by the eBay seller. Okay, what I'm interested in is are we getting a nice consistent? is this thickness here, which is 3.50 3 millimeters, 352. Yeah, it's pretty damn, right, 359. Okay, nice and tight, 348. Nice and tight, 348. You know, that's, that's as good as you can expect. <laughs> Little bits coming off. It's cracking. That's not anybody's fault but the gold, or it's not been annealed enough, or the gold contains too much solder and crap. I can't believe this took an hour. If anybody sat through this, or was, yeah, close to an hour, uh, congratulations. Anywho, um, so this is how you would make a, a sheet of gold. Uh, you want to anneal it a lot every time you move it a certain amount. And uh, no, it's not that hot anymore. And uh, just put it in. So there it is. Um, casting ingots, making some gold wire. Uh, well, that square wire, you make it smaller and smaller. And eventually, you can run it through these uh, things called um, drop plates. Here's a tungsten carbide drop plate. Very nice. Goes from uh, 0.26 of a millimeter, I doubt you'd ever need that, to 2.2 millimeters. Thickness. And uh, you know, you can draw some half round wire, but uh, that machine will make it. I uh, haven't even used that this much. I guess my, the first plate I owned, the holes aren't even marked, but you can go through all the way to this tiny hole, to that big hole, and you do it progressively. And when you pull it through, it's uh, super hard to pull. Uh, gold's very ductile. You gotta anneal it between every step. Again, it's, it's super hard to pull um, gold through one of those draw plates. They have a super expensive device that will do that for you. Um, it's by an Italian company called Fili Cavalian, and it's this metal rail with a big old, um, a big old thing that you can spin with your, with your arm. Where did that go? I find, I found an old device that I made <laughs> to do the same thing as this, uh, I don't know, it's just well over $1,000 for this machine, and it's this big rail, takes up a lot of space in the shop. But you know what? A boat winch and a little pair of jaws 
you you know you let out the you let out the winch you know you have this winch hooked to let's say <laughs> a big a metal board or a very stiff table or or something you know obviously with this mechanical advantage you would be able to draw something that would just rip your arm out right you just say say you have a nice two by six board and you have um, something like this thing or even just a couple bolts just like that uh, that device from Philly Cavalline is just a couple of a couple of different bolts you just slot your plate in there and then you have these a nice grabber plier thing and this this is an old uh old bench clamp and um you know th this will you could draw some wire with something as lame as this um you know imagine this all pulled out i made this about i don't know 30 years ago but i just saw how much they wanted for the real tool and uh knew how much i ripped out my hand just just trying to pull and just you know imagine this thing bolted to a two by six and this is at one end with the the end of the wire coming out of that draw plate and you know a twenty dollar boat winch from home depot <laughs> You're gonna pull your wire, uh, you know. I'm not even gonna say, you know, to a certain thickness because, hey, with this kind of mechanical advantage, it says, you know, don't lift personnel with it. It's a it's rated 600 pounds. Y you don't have 600 pound pulling power in your hand, but you you don't need one of these Philly Cavalin machines that you could probably look up um like i said capacity 600 pounds you think you can pull with 600 pounds uh, a really cheap way to uh make that machine <laughs> just like these guys in china figured out well we can we we don't need three quarter inch diameter bolts to push down the rollers we're going to use uh i think that's 10 millimeter um hey you save some money you can give people a rolling mill for a lot less money here just to round out the hour here <laughs> i'm sure no one's watched this all the way through and uh you know some pretty boring stuff all right well Let's see, a few minutes in the pickle. Let me throw in there that, yeah, that wire. Yeah, there it is. And just a little bit of, yeah, I'm pretty sure this will test to 14K. Like I said, you get it to whatever thickness you want in the square. And then you pull it through a, a round draw plate. You got round wire, you got square wire. You can compress this flat and have a rectangular wire. Everything's possible with the rolling mill. Yeah, I was gonna definitely kneel this again, but hey, here's my two little scraps of gold. And um, I could mill those out to make some useful jewelry. <laughs> useful because <laughs> everybody needs jewelry well have a great day everybody and that's what i got for you on using a rolling mill and casting ingots today bye-bye